All right, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning still. Uh, yesterday, uh, Secretary Austin and I were able to brief the President on the tremendous work that's being done to support our hospitals right now. Uh, at FEMA, uh, we've been part of this COVID mission since day one, um, beginning with supporting jurisdictions with medical personnel, uh, acquiring and shipping personal protective equipment, um, medical equipment, opening testing sites, and deploying federal resources in support of our state, local, territorial, and tribal members. As we approach the one-year anniversary of opening our first community vaccination center in California, just one of the thousands we supported across the country, FEMA and our over 20,000 strong workforce continues to meet the ongoing requirements of the pandemic. Our support to our partners hasn't stopped and will not stop until this pandemic is over. We know that the most critical need right now is medical staffing for our hospitals. And we've been working nonstop with the Departments of Defense and Health and Human Services who have been on the grounds in communities since day one to push even more medical teams out the door to communities who need it most. I've seen firsthand the impacts of these teams on their continued heroic efforts. During my time as commissioner in New York City for emergency management, at the very beginning of this pandemic, I had the privilege of speaking with the chief nursing officer at Elmhurst Hospital, which was at the time the epicenter of the epicenter in those very early days, and listened to her address the Department of Defense medical team as they were concluding their mission at their hospital. She said with tears in her eyes, you were the miracle we needed when we needed it most. DOD continues to deliver on those miracles every day as they stand shoulder to shoulder with the heroes working on the front line in your communities. Yesterday, I spoke with Governors Whitmer and DeWine, who both said separately that these teams, in addition to adding more clinical capacity, are a morale boost to the doctors, the nurses, and the support staff in the hospitals that they're working in and they have been working day and night to save lives. So now DOD is deploying six additional teams to Ohio, Michigan, Rhode Island, New Jersey, New York, and New Mexico. We will also be deploying an additional HHS team to Rhode Island. And in the next several weeks, we are prepared to do more. These teams are in addition to more than the, than the more than thousand staff that are already deployed to 26 states two territories, the District of Columbia, and 24 tribal nations. And since March of 2020, since the beginning of this pandemic, thousands of federal personnel have deployed all over our country. As critical as our doctors and nurses are, countless other professionals keep our hospitals running. Patient transporters, food workers, and cleaning staff are all at the heart of these healthcare facilities. And so for that reason, with the President's support, I am now directing an expansion of our FEMA policy to permit funding to states who elect to use their National Guard troops to fill these critical support roles in hospitals. During every disaster, FEMA's strength is our ability to coordinate with other st stakeholders, federal, state, local, tribal, private, and nonprofit partners to identify gaps and meet needs and this COVID mission has been no different. We meet with our DOD, HHS, and other federal partners um, daily to anticipate future needs and fill those requests. FEMA has also been supporting communities across the country through nearly $100 billion in funding for all types of COVID-related needs, including vaccination, safely opening and operating schools and other public facilities, and testing, thanks to an unprecedented commitment by this administration. This funding, combined with the extraordinary work of DOD, HHS, and our other federal partners, has enabled states and local communities to fight this pandemic, save lives, and protect families. This pandemic has shifted and changed through the Delta variant and now the Omicron variant, but our commitment and the commitment of the entire family, federal family has not changed. Together, we will continue to surge staff, push resources, and provide support using every tool that we have available to fight our fight against COVID-19. Thank you. I'll take a few questions. All right.